do you have a cottage or a cabin in the woods? It's usually where all the hand-me-down furniture goes. So let's give it an update with Benjamin Moore, Sharon Grack. Thanks, Sharon. This looks like the sort of cottage uh, most people can relate to. So, you, you know, you've got some furniture, you take it to the cottage, you use it over there, and then yes. you just look at it all together and it's like, this is, doesn't work. That's the thing. Even, like, a decorator inside everybody says, right. I've well, got to pull this together and have some <laughs> order somehow. So. I think color is a fantastic tool for that, right? It can mm -hmm. really pull a lot of mishmash, different styles, different things together, and you have a consistent color palette. So let's talk about color before yes. we talk about all the mishmash. You need inspiration. So with a cottage, a cabin, a farmhouse, you've got old things that mean something. So this was actually inspired by my friend's grandmother's vintage comforter. Do you have one of those pieces that maybe your parents didn't like, but you yeah. appreciate now, right? You want to so hang, and you want to hang on to it, and why shouldn't you? You and can make it work in the space. You can make it work. I wanted to get my color inspiration from there, so that's where I started, but you can see, if you remember the color wheel, we've got reds and greens, and those are yeah. opposite each other on the color wheel, so they can be really intense when you use them in paint, or you use just those two colors together, so yes. I wanted to add some vibrancy, so as much as this is my inspiration, I want to make it fresh and a little more contemporary, so I decided to take that color wheel and not and go from the red or in Benjamin Moore language berry wine of course of course <laughs> so go from the berry wine and then to do a split complementary you go to two colors adjacent the opposite so okay. adjacent to the green we've got blue and we've got yellow so I've got golden fields and my favorite blue grass oh, so nice. that's how I kind of pull that together and then you're really looking for pieces that make that all work okay so I got the yellow in the dresser I've got some in the bedding I'm gonna talk a little bit about mixing and matching and painting furniture and then the blue grass, I think this is a fantastic backdrop wall color for a whimsical cottage. You know, yes. white, you can do white, everyone does white, it's safe. But why not put another color, a color that's neutral? So blue grass has a little bit of green in it, it's got a little bit of gray in it, so it's mm. soft, it doesn't overpower. So again, and then what you want to do is, I, I always think in paint chips, obviously. <laughs> so I carry these around and I tell clients, carry your colors around when you're looking for accessories. They don't have to match exactly, but the idea is that you, you have some guidance when you're looking right. for pieces. So you and then if they don't work and you buy pieces or you have hand-me-downs, you can always paint them, right? So yes, you, can you can paint you can older make it pieces. Work by you can DIYing make it work. them. So you've done that with So I've done bench. that with quite a few pieces. So this um, bench at the front of the bed, I've used this for many City Line projects, so you may recognize it, but it's a great piece to paint any color you want. I've sanded it several times. It wasn't real solid wood, so it was okay. it's an easy thing to, to sand, paint, and I used the golden field for that. Nice. It matched quite nicely with the IKEA dresser. Yes. Um, um, which we had, and we had a good base of IKEA pieces that you, you start with. So you got some new. You don't want everything to be old if you can avoid it. Yeah. So I've got some new pieces, the bed, the jute rug, um, the, the nice white fresh bedding with the pattern on it. So, nice. Right? So then you're getting into the mixing and matching. So you want to layer in different patterns. Again, you're using your color palette as your guideline, right. but you're bringing in old and new. So we've got some vintage artwork on the wall, vintage lamp, vintage little textiles and rugs. So you can pull these little pieces in without getting too cluttered, right. but you want to have like pieces that have a story to them. So you've found new life for the pieces that you want to hang on to, the stuff that you absolutely love. You've pulled in a few new pieces, and you've taken pieces like the headboard. Well, isn't that great? And painted it so that it works. I mean, right. that's perfect with the comforter. And you might have an old bed that you could paint. Yeah. And sometimes you have a little tiny cottage room, and you don't really have room for a footboard and a headboard. Right. So this, um, before, I just bought it as an inexpensive piece of wall decor. Yeah. So again, it wasn't real wood, so I didn't feel bad painting it. Painted it this beautiful um, berry wine, and then it's like, wow. Like, it makes the statement in that room. And I didn't put too much of that color around or it might be overwhelming. Absolutely. So now it, it serves as your headboard. And what's cool is that we've talked about this on the show before. There are so many things you can do for a headboard. Absolutely. And haven't I done it? Like I've yes. done so many different things yes. over the years. So we had one I did that would be great for cod is taking old cedar shakes. Yeah. I just picked them up like a skid of them at the lumber store, painted them, stained them, put them together in this nice herringbone pattern. So that was one. And then a door. Everybody has doors where you can pick up doors at the Habitat for Humanity stores yeah. and just again just paint them add something to that bring your own style into it or canvases to add some dimension a bunch of inexpensive canvases from the art store paint them any color and that's a whole other um, head 
headboard idea. So yeah, you lay them out in a beautiful configuration, and you it. can make the headboard as big or as small as you want to. Exactly. So another idea for other a headboard so is you can use one of these screens. Now, you see, you could if you had a bigger room, you could just have it like this, or you could take the screen apart, and you could just pick these up in yeah. Chinatown, inexpensive sort of yeah. faux wicker. It paints so nice. Like, look at this. I just dry brush the paint on. So I've got my beautiful golden field, and you could do stripes, but you can see you could just do more of a dry brush effect. Yeah. So it's easy. It goes on it's well. It's really easy. It goes on you well. You have to prime it, obviously. No. Oh, you no, don't. No, I don't want to prime it because I want it to look. That looks like primary. See what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> it does. But you want it to have that, you want it to have that look. You want it to have that look. Absolutely. Okay. Otherwise, okay. you're that probably going to have to spray it. And then a lighting fixture really yeah. quickly. Take an old basket or um, a wicker waste paper basket. Yep. Take the handles off. Get these fantastic... Um, cord lights that you can get yep. everywhere now and then you can just hang it up so for under twenty dollars you've got your own you can paint it add your own story and to that's it, what so. you've done you've painted there you it there and that looks amazing if it doesn't move I paint it I know you do <laughs> for just a couple of dollars you can have your own lighting fixture right and paint it